So the big question is this, how do small business owners like us grow our leadership, develop our teams, and scale our business in a way that allows us to get our products and services out to the world, yet still remain profitable? That is the question, and this podcast will give you the answers. I'm Bradley Hamner, and this is the Club Capital Leadership Podcast. Hey, before we get into today's episode, did you know that Club Capital is the largest accounting and advisory firm for insurance agency owners in the country, providing monthly accounting, CFO services, and tax preparation? Check them out at club.capital. This podcast is brought to you by Autopilot Recruiting. Join over 1,200 State Farm agents in putting your recruiting on Autopilot. Any successful insurance agent will tell you how important team is. Finding those rock star team members doesn't happen when left to chance. It happens through consistent recruiting. You never know when you're going to lose a team member, and the key to an incredible team is constantly searching for the best talent. Autopilot Recruiting is a continuous recruiting service where you'll be assigned a recruiter that has been trained to recruit on your behalf every business day. This recruiter will take over and revamp your career plug, send out assessments, do pre-screen phone interviews, and schedule your in-office interviews. All you need to do is to show up and give a thumbs up or a thumbs down. This ongoing service is extremely affordable and a no-brainer for taking your insurance agency to the next level. Listeners of the Club Capital Leadership Podcast, go to autopilotrecruiting.com and use the code CLUBCAPITAL to get started. Again, autopilotrecruiting.com and use the code CLUBCAPITAL to get started. Welcome to another episode of the Club Capital Leadership Podcast. My name is Bradley Hamner, your host. On today's episode, we have Chris Ferretti back for a part two he and I cover a lot of different things. This is truly a fireside chat, but I think we'll cover some items that will be helpful along your journey in small business ownership and hopefully give you some ideas around productivity and some of the tools that we enjoy using. Without further ado, here's my conversation with Chris Ferretti. Are you an agency owner looking to grow your revenue, increase your bottom line, and better manage your taxes? Club Capital is here to help. Club Capital is the largest accounting and advisory firm for insurance agents in the country, providing monthly accounting, tax strategy, and CFO services. Way more than bookkeeping and your everyday run-of-the-mill tax prep, Club Capital is focused on providing financial and tax advisory services that help you plan and forecast your agency's performance. Their financial dashboards and agency forecasting tools help you better understand your agency's historical performance, create and measure future targets, and see how your agency compares to your peers around the country. Imagine what it would be like to understand the impact to your bottom line when deciding to hire a new employee or forecast the impact rate changes or commission rates will have on your business. With over $200 million in tracked annual revenue and $140 million in tracked annual expenses, Club Capital has the data and the team to help you make better informed decisions for your agency. They will help you turn that back office stress into the backbone of your agency's success by giving you the tools to take your agency and your leadership to the next level. Visit club.capital today to book a solution overview with one of our business consultants. Club Capital, way more than a CPA firm. Yeah, I mean, I really love Notion. Notion, I, I mean, I moved everything from Evernote. Evernote, I was an Evernote person for a long time. They still got a bunch of notes in there, but just the flexibility of Notion is is unbelievable. To to have it as a, a project management system, uh-huh. and then, you know, Ali and the team, we have a really tight system now on, it's it's like a system, like a workflow, you know, the, the workflow is just really, really tight for how we do things in Notion. It just makes it good. And, and I think that there's something for, you know, to be said for when things are easy to read and like, it's just organized and it makes okay. sense and everybody is able to look at it and be on, on the same page. And, you know, we, I mean, we were on Asana, we moved to Google Sheets. And then we moved it to Notion, which, you know, you typically wouldn't recommend that, but that made the most sense. It was the best thing for me because I was able to like move everything into one, into one place because previously it's like, okay, wait, the podcast is all over here on this tech stack, you know, and then this company is on this tech stack and this company is on this tech stack. And it's just like, it was, it was too much switching versus being able to get it into one place. And it's been a game changer. Yeah, I, I saw that you, that you had pretty much everything um, that has to do with your life, both personal and business in Notion, which I found shocking. Um, as you know, I'm a huge fan of Asana and I've been since day one, 
that being said, I had never seen anybody use Notion to the level that you're using it right now. So I'm, I'm very blown away. Uh, one thing that interested me actually, and I don't know if you want to dive into it, but I did see that, that you had a tab for, I believe it's called energy and focus audit or something like that. Oh yeah. Time what and is that? Yeah. Audit. yeah. Time and energy time audit. And energy Sorry about audit. that. Yeah. 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 Time and energy audit. Yeah, I did. So, uh, I really, I'm trying to get this guy to come on the pod. Um, but if you have not read the book, uh, by, written by Dan Martell, um, he's, I don't want to call him like a coach or mentor, but I mean, like I've been in a couple of groups with him, but he wrote, he just recently came out with a book called buy back your time. And so he, it, it's his formula. Okay. Um, yeah. is a game changer. Now I've heard him speak about this for a little while. And so he's just now kind of codified all of his, all of his thoughts into this book called buy back your time. And so his formula is, is audit transfer fill. And so he has this formula where you talk about um, what is your buyback rate? Okay, so like this is actually cool. I, I actually don't get to talk about this very much. This is kind of cool. So he says, okay, take your salary plus your distributions plus any, now he doesn't call it this, I'm calling it this, personal yaya. Like all the stuff you run through your business because you can as a business owner. So think about like your vehicle. So your truck payment, think about your gas, think about your cell phone and think about all the other stuff that you run through your business. So let's just say, okay, that in 2022, your business was really worth to you $300,000. Okay. $300,000. Mm -hmm. All right. So take 300,000. You can do this math with me if you want to 300,000 and divide it by 2000. Look, I know most people will use 2080 for the number of hours in a year, but like just to make the math simple, just divide it by 2000. So you get 150. Then take that number and divide it by four and you'll get 3750. So the idea is that any task 3750 an hour or less you need to be outsourcing that. You need to be transferring that to someone else because you'll get a at least a 4X return on your time and on your money. Well, $37, $37 an hour is a, like a $75,000 job. Like, you know, that. So, mm -hmm. and so what you do is you go through this first process, which is called audit. And so you audit your time and your energy. So I went through this process and of course I'm a notion freak. And so I was like, I'm going to put it in notion. So I did the exercise myself and I went through for about two weeks and audited everything I was spending my time doing and looking at, Oh my gosh, what am I doing? Why am I doing that task? I shouldn't be doing that task. And so that's what I did. That's what I put it in notion. And then from that, the next step is you transfer that right to someone else. And then here's the key. You fill it back with only $150 an hour task or more. Does this make sense? So yeah. You yeah. figure out what your buyback rate is. And then you go through audit, transfer, fill. That's it. Question. When you read this book, because when I hear you, as you were speaking, by the way, I actually purchased the audiobook version. No joke. I love it. <laughs> Chris is like <laughs> action taker. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so as you were speaking, I purchased the audio, but then like the more and more that, that, like that you spoke about it, I actually realized like, okay, there are exercises that this book has, like maybe audio is not the best way to consume this book. So when you were going through it, how did you consume it? This, like when you're going okay, through, the, yeah. the answer to this question, the answer to this question make should <laughs> be just like a whole episode itself, but I'll answer yeah. it. Okay. Cause I'm actually thinking about doing this. So I used to change how I consumed, I, I've changed how I consumed books. So I used to be, I would purchase the physical book. And then if I liked it, I would get the, um, like the audio book. And then I would get the Kindle book. Okay. That was kind of like my order. And there was really like no method or madness to it. Now mm -hmm. I actually have a method to do it. So if somebody sends me a book, like if you said, Hey Bradley, you got to check this book out. The first place I would go is I'd buy it on Audible. 
the second place I would buy it on Kindle. And then I might get in a physical book because here's why I now listen to pretty much all the books, all my books on 2.5 X speed. And I can get 95% of the goodness of a book and I can finish a book in an hour, hour and a half or something like that. Now for somebody that's not gotten accustomed to that, you've got to maybe like build into it, but I've listened to things on one X speed for so long, one and a half X speed for so long that I just kind of built up to it. And in audible, you know, this, Mm -hmm. you know, it goes 1.6, 1.7, 1.8, 1.9. Um, so I've got, I like that book so much that I actually have all three versions. I have the physical book, I have the, the Kindle and I have the, um, audible, uh, version too. And the reason is because I just love the highlights. I love the highlights in Kindle and I've got the highlights, um, synced from Kindle through an app called Readwise, and guess where it syncs to? Audible. Notion. 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 Oh, no way. <laughs> yes, it does. Yes. <laughs> Somebody is listening to this and going, wait, that is like too complicated. It's really not. It's really not. Uh, I, 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 Chris, you, you'll obviously see this. You'll see this. I'm going to share my screen. So if somebody's watching this on YouTube, you'll be able to see it. But like, there it is. Like there, that's, you see this? Yes, 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 yes. I see it 100%. Yeah. So, so that. So this is Readwise. Readwise is like, I think the charge just actually came through on my credit card a few minutes ago, but like, it's like $9 a month. Readwise is incredible app. I love it so much, but it syncs. So it, it Readwise is picking up all of my highlights from the book. And so Chris, like I could actually send you, look, I've got 112 highlights from Buy Back Your Time. And what's cool, Chris, is I could literally hit share and I could copy this link and I could share it with you or anybody else. Now you couldn't edit my highlights, but you could literally right. have my highlights from that book. That's incredible. Um, primarily because of the fact that the only reason why I ever buy either a physical book or a Kindle book is, is because of this actually, because of highlights. And I cannot tell you how many highlights I've made in, in, on a book and never, ever, ever look back at them. Because of the fact that I just simply never, one, like I just didn't want to go through the entire book to find those highlights or two, I wasn't carrying that book physically. So it's cool to see how this integrates with Notion. And then you can just, uh, by the way, this sounds like a, this sounds like a, like a paid advertising, a paid advertisement for Notion. It's not like I'm generally getting to know no, Notion no. as Bradley uh, showed this to me. Um, if anybody knows somebody at Notion and they want to be a paid sponsor, Notion, if you're listening, you're happy to be a sponsor because I love, yeah. I love, uh, I love Notion. Yeah, I just put it in the chat. You can see the uh, my my book notes. Uh, nice. I back your time. It's an awesome. We'll even book. Had I mean, him the... Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. I hope to be able to get him on uh, to come on the, the the podcast. He would be uh, he'd be a really uh, awesome guest. But anyway, that's a, that's an that's an awesome book. So. But yeah, we kind of talked about a few different things, but that's my order of buying books now is Audible, Kindle, and then the physical book. But I really love that flow. Um, It takes a little bit of setup initially, but really it was not that hard. And so it automatically syncs all of those highlights. And so if I was able to like, um, so actually I told you I just interviewed Cameron, right? And so Mm -hmm. we've got a book club going on um, for his book, Second in Command. Well, guess what I've done? I've just taken my, I just take that link, shared it with the community. And so everybody that's in the book club is seeing my highlights of the second in command book. And I don't have to do anything except read the book and highlight. Pretty sick, pretty sick, man. Yeah. Um, so. Well, let's dive into the reason why we're on the podcast today. So we started talking about project management tools, one, because we're nerds <laughs> and two, because <laughs> we were talking hard. about, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And two, because of the fact that we were talking about uh, employee onboarding and how important it is to have a repeatable process every single time that you onboard, it, uh, I'm sorry, onboard a new team member. Um, so I, at the position that I now have at, at Club Capital, I interview people almost every week. Uh, and you being the owner of your agency, as well as many other businesses, you're constantly interviewing people. And 
one quote that I came across, I, I forgot if it was either in a podcast or in a book, was that culture starts at the interview. Um, so if culture starts at the interview, it a thousand percent starts on day one. And that is exactly why you want to make sure that your employee onboarding process is incredibly fine-tuned, incredibly set up. And mind you, it's constantly going to be iterating because you're constantly going to find things that you can improve, but you have to be conscious about it. I cannot tell you how many times I've uh, either spoken to people that because of the fact that they only think of themselves as a uh, small business, which they are, but just because you are a small business, by the way, it doesn't mean that you have to carry yourself like one. Uh, in fact, there are individuals like Ham 500, for example, which is a, a person that I definitely would like recommend uh, following on social media. He is uh, just a serial entrepreneur, but he talks about the concept of carrying yourself as a Fortune 500 company, hence the nickname Ham 500. Um, and bottom line, Fortune 500 companies don't, don't leave anything up to guessing, you know, like the employee onboarding process, among many other processes, are that they're processes, they're repeatable tasks that that you can follow that will improve the likelihood of somebody getting up to speed in a short amount of time and be able to be proficient and efficient for you, for your organization as quickly as possible. Mm. So you don't think we should do we should be willy nilly. <laughs> we should be willy nilly. I don't think we should be willy nilly. I mean, think about it. Like you, you wanna, you wanna make sure that when somebody joins your organization, they're like, "Wow!" Like I am genuinely surprised at, at how easy they made this onboarding for me. Um, once again, culture starts from the interview. So I, I, I do like that. One. I do. I really like that a lot. Actually, I was just pulling up. Um, I'll share. If you're watching this on YouTube, you'll see it. Like, there's one. I'll share this. Like, here's our team on. Oh, wow. So, anyway, yeah, like we have this onboarding playbook. And, like, do you see down here? It's got like Bradley's backstory mm -hmm. on there. So, you know, you and I are going to get you should sell this. this. Some people. <laughs> <laughs> but but like i was you know in google docs i was looking on the left hand side to say okay bradley's backstory current businesses overview of the company core 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 values core four right vision mm -hmm. um systems we use meet the team okay well here's the thing that document took a little bit of time to to put together and these at least initially but once you then record the video, you've done it, you've done it one time. Mm -hmm. And so like, I don't know if you, you guys, I, I, I know you use Loom, but like, that's all those videos are in Loom. You actually probably saw the link, right? The link right there mm -hmm. that it was, you know, so then you can send, we actually just did this with Lauren is you send the link out to one document. And it's like, watch every one of these videos, read over this document and then they just are like, oh, okay, cool. I mean, they kind of get mm -hmm. to know everything. Your thoughts on that? Like, is that kind of what you're talking about? Because it, the reason yeah. I'm saying this is because I was like years ago, I would hear this and say like, yeah, 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 yeah. That's a that's a good idea. That's a good idea, Chris. I need to I need to create an onboarding process. That's a good idea. And then I never do it. <laughs> I mean, I just never do it. I just was like, I don't have time to do this bull crap. I have got things to sell people to talk to, emails to respond to, Chris, I ain't got time for this bull crap. Yet, that was the kind of the, the an example of the stuff that was holding me back. Does this make sense? Like, I think yeah. that's where somebody might be listening to us saying, yeah, I need to do that. But like, I ain't got time for it. If I can just say this, as an entrepreneur, if you don't have time today, you'll never have time. And what I mean by that is that you can keep telling yourself and fooling yourself into being busy all the time and and think that you're being productive, but what you're really not being is actually effective. You're really robbing from the success of the company by telling yourself that like that you don't have time. And because of that, you, like you actually never sit down to do these things that 
can free up so much of your time because at the end of the day, typically, typically the people who are listening to this are going to want to hire people to grow mm -hmm. and just in general, you know, like people are, are constantly, you know, coming in and out of companies. How much more time would you free up if you didn't have to spend, you know, 10 hours, for example, and 10 hours is me being modest, 10 hours training, a, like just training a new team member. Mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. Rome wasn't built in one day and this document, this process doesn't have to be either. Um, you can simply start by by automating your, you know, like creating a video to like to tell your backstory, like how did you get to where you are today? As opposed to you spending that one hour or that like that 30 minutes of your time and the new team member's time, that's two hours pretty much that you can save yourself by simply um, by simply just making that video one time. It doesn't have to be pretty or anything like that. Just get, just get the video done one time and share that and then just keep adding and adding and adding to that over time. I mean, you like like you use a Google Doc, like we use something called Trainal here at at Club Capital. Mm -hmm. Bottom line, yeah, we, it doesn't we, matter. Uh, you, do you know we interviewed him on the podcast, the the CEO of Trainual? I do know that. I do know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah so bottom line, it's like, like you don't have to be use some some fancy system or anything like that. Just use anything where a process is 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 written down. Heck, use sticky notes if you want. Like just anything that uh, a team member can just follow steps one, two, three, four, five, six, etc. to get onboarded. Yeah. I think, have you ever heard this, um, a guy that I follow on, um, well, I mean, he's all over social media, but, um, oh gosh, Jack Butcher, Visualize Value. Have you seen this guy? Mm -mm, I don't think so. What's, what's, uh, uh, what's he about? Go, go, go to his website, Visualize Value. He's got some, I've ordered some of his like, um, pictures and stuff. Um, yeah. He's just got some really cool visual visual things that you can put on your like screensaver on your desktop or on your phone. But um, I ended up ordering actually some of them and um, putting them up in my office because I just liked them so much. But um, anyway, reason I'm saying that is not because of that, but because he's got this idea of build once, ship twice. I just love that. Build once, ship that twice. Song. Yeah. It's, I love that. It's, I love simple frameworks. And so like, I think onboarding is kind of that way. Like, I'm gonna do this one time. I'm gonna do this one time. I'm gonna do it right. But well, I say that I say it's one time. It's like build the structure out and then just improve upon it as you go. Like, I, as as we were talking, I was looking at that Google document I was just showing you a minute ago. Mm -hmm. and I was like, Oh, wait a minute, actually, that needs to be we need to add this. I literally just did it as we were on this on this podcast. I just updated one thing um, because I needed to put a link in there to our vivid vision because um, we had just updated it. So anyway, but yeah, well, like, what are a few things that you think? I mean, I, I gave some of mine, your 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 core values, your backstory as the owner, founder, agency owner business owner like I think that's important like you could be like hey here's my story here's how here's how I got started in business yep so <laughs> you could even put that in the recruiting process like here you go here's the link you know I don't have you don't have to tell the same story all the time but some people people like to know that like how did you decide to get you know started in this business and you can you can do that um if you own multiple businesses so like what are the other businesses you're involved with um get to know you a little bit your family etc what are some other things that you think that would be important vision of the company is is big so you know what's the the vision direction of the company what what else do you think should be in that onboarding i think some expectations that like that you have for them it's like hey like by week three for example i expect you i like this is what success looks like for your position and these mm -hmm. are the milestones that i have for you so like by week two i like i expect you to be able to do xyz by week three week four etc week five is when we're going to have like your sign off call where we're going to see you know how effective we've been at uh, at onboarding you and training you and we're going to do a test to test you on for example if they're doing um if they're doing sales for you then they might do like a sales cold call sales um sales closing call etc um, with you just whatever it is that their job duties are going to be 
just have milestones broken down for them and then a sign off just like make it incredibly easy like the less confusion that you can cause for anybody that you deal with be it a client or a new employee the better the relationship is going to be so i would say yeah. that's something yeah that's good so i had that so i guess i kind of saw mine as a couple of different things so we're basically saying the same thing i just haven't phrased a little bit different so um i think of uh the onboarding as like the template for any position at you know just an overview of everything this is the tech we use this is like all of those things then in their job description i then lay out here's your rollout with your milestones and your timelines of how we're going to get you in your particular position up to speed does that make sense so it's almost like the the onboarding is universal for any position but then for that particular position it's their job description with the milestones that they've got to be able to hit along the way does that make sense yep 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 yeah. love that yeah. cool um so you you and I were also talking beforehand about uh you were saying ERC so what what's up with some ERC stuff I've just been really concerned lately because of the fact that I'm seeing everybody start talking about this out of nowhere um mm -hmm. every single person um whether it's people looking to qualify for ERC or random marketers not even see it you know CPAs, enrolled agents, tax um, specialists, etc. You're talking about media personalities that I've seen on social media suddenly talk about ERC and say like, "Hey, you qualify for up to twenty six thousand dollars per employee." You know, DM me to to get you like this money today. Mm. And bottom line, there's no such thing as a free lunch, is what I want to say. So, whoever is coming to you with a carrot and that carrot sounds you know especially if that care is related to the irs my advice to you would simply be to ask a lot of questions how are you and the the overall theme of the questions that i would ask them is how are you qualifying me for this that's one i mean that would be if they are not able to give you a straight answer run a hundred percent run because guess what the way that you even obtain this tax credit is not because of the fact that you fill out an, an application. Absolutely not. I wish that I wish that was the case, because that would that, like that would mean that there's somebody on the IRS side that's reviewing the application and tells you yes, this makes sense. No, this does not make sense. The way that you, like the way that you obtain this credit is actually by filing an amendment. So it might be years until somebody catches the fact that you shouldn't have gotten the money that. You might have got it, you know, four or five years ago. And who knows, you might have already spent that money. Um, so bottom line is, before you sign any paperwork, before you submit anything, just ask the person that you're working with, how are you qualifying me for this? That's one thing. Number two, check how long they've been around in business. Like I've seen so many businesses, which I'm not going to name because I don't want to throw anybody like under the bus, but they literally spawn up only to do ERC. And I guarantee you that, that the second that ERC is done, they're, like, they're going to close their doors and chow. Like right now, they're promising people, of course, like we're going to represent you in the event that like that you audited, et cetera. But at the end of the day, like it's, just, like it's just a business entity. Like I can shut down a business entity, disappear, chow, chow. You know, like you did business with that, with that business entity, not, like not with Chris Freddy. Don't talk to me, you know? So I would just... Be very careful and don't just, if it sounds too good to be true, it usually is. And with the ERC, just be careful is what, is what I want to say. There's no such thing as a free lunch. <laughs> I mean, if no, you think no, you're no. going to get $30,000 per employee free and the government's just going to hand that out and be like, here, no problem. Here's a hundred grand. Yeah. It's yeah. like, wait, what's that? You had the, like, it's like, what's that? Like you as you know, typically like the people listening to this are insurance agents. It's like, what's that? It's like you, an insurance agent made more money than ever in 2020, yeah. 2021 and 2022. And you still expect me 
to give you a like a credit on top of that it's kind of like how the um uh, like this like the sniff test that i would run through yeah like i feel like that's how the irs is going to look at it eventually it's like it's like okay all these people that claimed that they were affected because they they closed their doors somehow they still were able to work remotely and make more money and make more money than ever and they still like expect us to give them tax dollars for whatever reason mm-hmm. absolutely not give me that money back plus fines you know plus fees plus whatever so yeah i mean you know it's not, i didn't even think about it until right now or a minute ago somebody was just telling me that their like a family member a, like a distant family member had just had a trial now what they did was certainly illegal so um but they had <laughs> applied for a ppp oh loan. boy not a there business owner not a business owner but a, got a ppp loan got like a hundred and fifty thousand mm-hmm. dollars and uh you know of course didn't have a legitimate business or whatever so you know like obviously you have a legitimate business you applied for it be fine like whatever but they didn't and the, and the, and they're going to jail they're going to jail for a period of time for it yeah. and i think they've done some other stuff but anyway that's not to scare somebody it's just like you know yeah. i mean if, if you think that you're just going to get you know apply throw some stuff out there and this company's going to take 20 percent off the top and they're going to defend exactly you, they're going to defend you they're going to shut exactly. that company down in two seconds they get that they they got they got their bag and they they moved on buddy Yep. If I'm not mistaken, the the last date that people can apply for ERTC is March 15th of 2024. So, the, uh, so basically, like, once again, what I hope doesn't happen, but I, like, I'm not going to be surprised if it happens. It's like right after that day, companies, boom, just liquidate and the owners, like I said, they're, they go, they go away scot-free because of the fact that they walk away scot free because of the fact that you're not doing business with the individuals, like like you're doing business with the business entity. So if that mm-hmm. business entity has has been dissolved, sayonara, you know, ciao. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sure. So just you're like just really, and by the way, like I'm not telling you this just because you should be scared or anything like that. And there are two legitimate ways to qualify for this, which is showing a drop in revenue, um, or having opened your business um after february 15th of 2020 um the drop in revenue i'm not going to dive too deep into it because of the fact that laws might change but it would be pretty obvious like this is truly meant to be uh help for businesses that were affected Mm -hmm. it's not meant to be for the people who are killing it and yes they survived a pandemic because of the fact that they might have gone remote and whatnot but um and like 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 once again like like your office may have been shut down but if you were able to transition your team to work remotely and you still killed it like just just make it make sense for me you know like and, and last thing that i want to say is just with the ppp loan uh that one did have an application but it was not regulated at all i mean so many people are coming out today just like you're saying um that are just going to jail because of the fact that they just got loans that didn't belong to them. Um, and mind you, these loans were actually meant for like payroll protection loan. Like 80% of these loans were meant to be used for uh, payroll purposes and then the and then the payroll and utility purposes, but the bulk of that 80% had to be used for payroll. Mm-hmm. Um, so bottom line, it's like, even that came with stipulations. And obviously most people just like, there was, there was a group of criminals that call themselves the PPP boys, by the way. Um, the PPP I'm boys, that, really? I'm that serious. I'm that serious. And like, they would go to clubs and like get like the bottle signs, you know, like that, like that literally said, like the PPP boys. And guess where, guess where they are now, you know? <laughs> um, so uh, they're, 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 with, they're with their boys. <laughs> they're with their boys for sure. You could say that. <laughs> um, oh, so, I mean, so once again, this, this is not like if you got ERC uh, the right way, don't, this is not even meant for, like, this is not meant for you at all. If anything, this is for the business owners who are just learning about it right now in 2023, as opposed to when yeah. this was released um, and you being promised all these, you know, all these things that I like, that is basically free money. I would just be worried about the free money. That's all that I, that I want to say. 
Yeah, I get that. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. I mean, if you if you if you've done it legit, there's there's nothing to there's nothing to yeah. talk about. Yeah. So all right, let's take uh we said we'd talk about it next next time. And so it's next time. Chat mm. GPT three. GPT three. All right. So let's have you it. have you played around this, with this? Are you a paying member? I am a paying member, yeah. Me too. Me too. I'm <laughs> paying the twenty dollars. I love nice. this thing, man. All right, so like real practical, what have you actually used it for? So some people are seeing this, like, you know, like what have yeah. you actually, I'm going to give a couple examples. We give a couple examples. It's going to be like, you know, I might incriminate myself here on, on a couple of things, but it's all right. Uh, yeah. Right now, um, right now when I'm recording this is you and I, it's not thousands of people listening to it, but you know, it's all right. Exactly. So, I mean, um, one very quick thing is actually uh, about two weeks ago, I had to do a, a presentation and I was just like stressing about it, right? And then because the research that's going to go into it and whatnot, and lo and behold, I go into ChatGPT and I was like, hey, uh, create an outline for a presentation on blank. Like the blank was just like some tech stuff. Uh, and guess what? It created the outline for me. Like I'm staring at it right now. In fact, uh, it gave me six points in that outline and then i simply my next prompt was just elaborate on the points that you made and then you know it did elaborate on every single point which i can simply use as like as the content um and then i asked it to give me some recommendations for some for some um what do you call it um ai like slides makers just because i didn't want to feel like putting to i didn't feel like putting together like the content and whatnot and then it told me about slides that slides that AI, where all I had to do was literally copy the content, uh, paste it into this uh, add-on that slides what? AI is, and then boom, <laughs> it created the entire presentation for me. I, obviously, like I went into like edit some pictures and like add some logos and things like that, but that was it right there. Like I, like I created a presentation probably in, without exaggeration. 45 minutes and it would have taken me easily I don't know three to four hours of research then putting it together and I just did it in 45 minutes okay so that's a good example that's really good I like that so um okay <laughs> I did realize this is really <laughs> like a notion this is like a notion uh ad it's not intended to be at all but all right, so Notion just came out with Notion AI, like they've embedded okay. AI into Notion. All right, so I'm going to share my share my screen because like you saw, I was showing Chris earlier, like at the back end of Notion, but like on this one, so I had this idea and I actually recorded this episode. Like you can actually see, um, if, again, if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll see, like I put this episode's recorded and, you know, tagged the team and and the whole, whole nine yards. Well, this idea... I'd heard about this before, and this is a solo episode coming out uh, in a few weeks uh, on a Friday called Rembrandt in the Attic. And the idea is that you've got these assets on your laptop or in the in the business that you've kind of forgotten about. And so it's an analogy to literally people have like had Van Gogh pieces of art and uh, even a Rembrandt literally in their attic. I mean, there's this one, like you can see it on here, some research determined the painting was actually previously unknown by Vincent van Gogh painted in 1888 is valued over 60 million. It was in the, in an attic in Norway. And then there was this Rembrandt that was painted in 1634. Okay. So I'm showing these examples that I had this idea and I could have spoke to it, but I went to notion AI and I, you know, went to the place and I said, Hey, uh, tell the story of note of Rembrandt in the attic. So it gave me like, it gave it to me. And I said, give me longer, give me more examples. And then I said, tie it to the analogy of having a business assets. And so uh, anyway, it typed that out and it gave me the context that I was looking for to tell, give that analogy that you have some assets in your business. So anyway, that solo episode's coming out, but like, that's how I actually used it to help me to formulate and i've done this actually a few other times with some of the solo episodes and so 
Like I had the idea and then I just used Notion AI to put it right there in there. So there you go. Yeah, I would say uh, just to talk about AI in general, um, right now, yes, we're talking about all these cool applications, um, all these cool applications that are coming out with AI. And But at the end of the day, like the way that I see AI for, at least for the next like, I don't know, 10 years, it truly is a tool. Like I, like I don't see it necessarily replacing jobs right away. Uh, right. If anything, I see it amplifying individuals that mm -hmm. are knowledgeable in, you know, in an area. They're knowledgeable in an area and, and they simply need something to gather their scattered thoughts, for example, and to put it together into like a very eloquent piece of like, like whether it's like an essay or like whatever the case may be. Prime example is ChatGPT can do just about anything. Um, one engineer asked ChatGPT to build out like a, like a tic-tac-toe game. Um, and if I go ahead right now to ChatGPT and say, build out tic-tac-toe, it'll build it, but it's going to be like a very crappy tic-tac-toe mm -hmm. game because of the fact that I don't know what instructions to give it for yeah. the actual tic-tac-toe game to look like incredible and have all this crazy graphics and cool rules and things like that. So it's like, whereas an engineer that understands how to build a, like an application can go ahead and, and create all these cool features. So all that I'm trying to say is that chat, you know, things like ChatGPT and, and AI in general can save people with, with skills time right now, but I don't think that it's going to replace replace people um, in the next 10 years. M mind you, beyond that, maybe so, but for the time being, um, for like the next 10 years, I think that we're going to be pretty okay. If it, like if anything, I would say skill, like, you know, get skilled at anything, not necessarily in artificial intelligence because it's so broad, but just like, just be, yeah. just get more knowledgeable in whatever industry you're in and learn how to leverage AI for your industry. I totally, I totally agree. I, I, I think that like this, is the mindset and sometimes mindset stuff gets thrown around as like, oh, I have a good mindset. But no, I actually think there's a mindset to this is that you can either hear this and roll your eyes and say like, ah, whatever, I can't use that or something. But like the mindset that I've adopted and then I've tried to impart on someone else, so hopefully this serves somebody, is that. I'm going to learn to surf. I'm not going to get dumped by the wave. Yep. And so like I could say, oh, I'm worried about this or that, or how's that going to disrupt this industry? I don't know, but I am going to try to stay as much as possible on the cutting edge. And I've been around, you know, have been on some calls with some people. It's like, wow, they are really not afraid of what this AI is doing. And they're like trying to figure out a way to incorporate it into their business and help them currently do things better, faster, easier. And um, I think there's just so much potential out there, but like you have to embrace it and just be willing to go in and tinker with it, you know? Um, and, and, you know, you don't have to pay the 20 bucks for chat GPT no. or whatever, but like, you know, um, but it's $20 just to, to go around and play around with it. And, you know, like, hey, you're about to make a social media post. You know, I, I'd like to make a social media post about, well, it's not the, a spring. Tomorrow is going to be March 1st. So, you know, about sp spring coming, can you help me put something together? You know, or uh, you're going to do a post in your local neighborhood. Like it can give you these prompts that will kind of help you and you'll get better at those chat GPT prompts. And so I, I would just encourage people like just learn to surf. Don't get dumped by the wave. Exactly. Um, just look at it as a tool. Like, and, and speaking of this, like, for example, I just told chat GPT, write a short rap about spring and Eminem's like an Eminem's voice. And it's literally doing it right now. Like <laughs> yeah. for 20 yeah. bucks, like for $20 a month, like you get access to a super pro like, I'm surprised that civilians have access to this at 20 bucks a month. I mean, that's yeah. in incredible. Like if anything, I would say, whether you're an employee, business owner, et cetera, but specifically, if you're an employee, look at this as an amplifier. This is the tool or the tools that will help you be a super producer.
Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I like that. All right, man. I think that's the pod. What do you think? That's the pod, my friend. Thank you very much for your time. Really appreciate it. And I always appreciate coming back and speaking with you. I appreciate you. You bring bring some cool topics. I like to I, I don't get too many people I get to nerd out with, you know. So this is this is good. Yeah. Let's chat about what the next topic should be. But uh I'm I'm definitely excited. I'm definitely excited for sure. Hey, big shout out to our podcast sponsors, Club Capital, Mr. Chris Ferretti for sponsoring the podcast, Autopilot Recruiting, Coach P Consulting, and Direct Clicks, all awesome businesses. Go to club.capital, book a no obligation demo. Make sure you don't request Mr. Chris Ferretti. No, <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you're looking to bring on some A players, go to Autopilot Recruiting. Let Alex and the team know you've heard about them on the podcast. We want you to get some of the best leads that you possibly can. SEO, PPC, go to direct clicks. And if you, of course, are wanting to develop your team and also get some additional information on things like onboarding, I know David and his team talk about that quite a bit and how they've been able to onboard. I don't know how many team members he's got now, 20, 25, 30, something like that. Go to coachpconsulting.com. Till next episode, lead well. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Chris. We took a lot of different turns there. That's something we haven't done, but hopefully you've seen over the last few years, we're going to continue to try things and maybe some of you can give me some feedback. And if you like that style of conversation I had with Chris, shout out to our podcast sponsors. We're so thankful for them to be able to allow us to serve all of you, Autopilot Recruiting, Direct Clicks, Club Capital, and Coach P Consulting. You know, I was just having a conversation in the last 24 hours or so with a business owner who's in the process of wanting to starting to expand his team. He's got a growth plan he's wanting to be able to hit for the rest of this year. And he started to think about, you know, how's he going to attract A players and what's that look like? And he's got a pretty good checklist. But one of the things that he was the most concerned with was how is he going to source really good clients? Because you know, well, we've had a lot of guests on there that the pool of really good people is difficult to find. And some of the people that you're going to be really wanting to bring onto your team are simply just not available. Well, reach out to Autopilot Recruiting and talk to them about how they can help you to be able to find some of those A players and put a, you know, pretty significant volume, but a volume that you can manage of A players in front of you so that you can take them through your process and be able to grow and expand your team, autopilotrecruiting.com. Let's say you're hiring one of those positions is going to be a sales position. And you want to make sure that, you know, not only the dollars you're investing in them, but the dollars you're investing in your marketing is going to be able to help you to really get great quality leads that your sales team is able to convert. Visit directclicksinc.com. They can talk to you about how to be able to get really great leads from Google pay-per-click and also be able to work with you on your social media now, but also your SEO. So you have inbound leads, people reaching in, calling into you that are quality leads at a very good pay-per-click price, but also really great lead price that you know your team is going to be able to convert. Visit directclicksinc.com. You know, I, I don't think that it's dropped yet, but I did a recent episode uh, around proximity and the people that you're around, your network of people, how important that is. And sometimes just being able to kind of see how people are thinking about something, not just the playbook they have, the word track that they have, but just how they're thinking about something is really key. Well, that's exactly what you get with David and Coach P. Go to coachpconsulting.com. Let David know that you heard about him on the Club Capital Leadership Podcast. And you wanted to just kind of get an idea, a test run of what his coaching is and what the experience is like. For $250, you get twice a week coaching for you and this game changer for your team. Go to coachpconsulting.com. Of course, you hear us talk about it so often, but financials are really the backbone. At the end of the day, all the sales, all the activities eventually make it down to your financials. You're investing the dollars. You're bringing home more of the profits to you and your family. You want to be able to 
use those financials. And some for some people, it can be a little overwhelming to not know, hey, don't understand the terminology. I'm not a numbers person. Hey, I get it. I was there. I was that person. I've detailed my story out before. But when you work with Club Capital, they're going to be able to help you to really begin to adopt and, and get the label of becoming the, your own CFO. Maybe you've not kind of seen yourself that way as the chief financial officer of your business, but a little bit over time, they're going to give you the tools, but they're also going to help you with the skill set and even the mindset to be able to help you to grow your business. Visit club.capital. You'll see the entire menu and suite of items that they offer. Go to club.capital. All right, everyone, till next episode, lead well. So the big question is this, how do small business owners like us grow our leadership, develop our teams and scale our business in a way that allows us to get our products and services out to the world yet still remain profitable? That is the question and this podcast will give you the answers. I'm Bradley Hamner and this is the Club Capital Leadership Podcast. Hey, before we get into today's episode, did you know that Club Capital is the largest accounting and advisory firm for insurance agency owners in the country, providing monthly accounting, CFO services, and tax preparation? Check them out at club.capital.